Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean and the largest of Italy's 12 political regions. The population of Sicily is a little over 5 million, but there may be at least an additional 300,000 illegal aliens. Palermo is the regional capital and where the tour began. Sicily accounts for only 6% of the Italian GDP. The local economy is entirely based on the public sector, real estate and retail commerce. There is very little industry, manufacturing or high-tech industry. Tourism and agriculture account for almost all of Sicily's international trade. Principal exports are bottled water, wine, olive oil and orange juice concentrate. The railway network is part of the Italian state railway system and comprises three trunk routes and the remnants of a once extensive rural railway network. The main trunk route runs from the capital Palermo to Messina in the northeast corner of the island, a distance of 142 miles, taking just under three hours and with an hourly service. The second trunk route runs from Messina along the eastern edge of the island to Catania, 60 miles, and on to Syracuse, 141 miles from Messina. The service frequency to Catania is half hourly and two hourly on to Syracuse. Thirdly, a main route runs between Palermo and Catania, 132 miles, taking two and three quarter hours and with a two hourly frequency. Palermo Centrale Station was opened in 1886 and was considered one of the finest large stations on the Italian railway system. It was all but destroyed during the Second World War. Note the trolley buses outside the main station. Palermo Station was rebuilt with the external façade a copy of the original. Internally it was entirely new construction. Today it has ten very long platforms and trains with through coaches to Rome, Turin and Milan make use of the train ferry to reach their destinations. Work began in 2007 on a new tram network and the four new lines were opened in 2015. Line 1 is separate from the other lines. 17 Bombardier Flexity Outlook trams operate the routes. Line 1 terminates opposite the front of Palermo Central Station. The station concourse of Palermo Central Station is bright and modern and tracks have been shortened to provide a wide circulation area. A morning commuter train arrives comprising two three-car units of class ALE 501. These have been recently introduced on the Sicilian trunk routes. These are Alstom built units based on lint design. The overnight sleeper train from Rome, departing at 21.31, arrives at Palermo 80 minutes late. Journey time is 12 hours 31 minutes. The locomotive is an E656, a bore 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 articulated unit of 4,200 horsepower and first built in 1975. A one-cab push-pull locomotive of class E464 arrives with its train. Introduced in the late 1990s, 717 of these units are now in service, each one of 3,000 horsepower. The class is the most numerous of any FS class. They are the first FS locomotives provided with automatic Scharfenberg rapid coupling systems. Meanwhile, a class 245 shunter has coupled onto the rear of the empty stock of the overnight train from Rome and removed them to the carriage siding. Originally a class of 186, less than 20 of these locomotives remain in use, all on station pilot duties. Another late running overnight train, this one from Rome, arrives in Palermo behind an E656 locomotive. Introduced in 1975, less than 10 of these locomotives remain in service at Easter 2016, all based in Sicily.
Eventually, the train we had been due to catch at 10.05 was propelled 80 minutes late into the station by E656005, one of the earliest of the class. This locomotive had been the one that had brought in the Rome sleeping car train, our rostered locomotive having failed. Arrival at Messina Central, 77 minutes late. The locomotive will be removed and the carriages propelled onto a waiting train ferry. The city of Messina was destroyed twice during the 20th century, first in 1908 by a severe earthquake and secondly during the Second World War when it was flattened by Allied bombing campaigns. It has been rebuilt after each event. The station concourse was rebuilt in the 1970s. Outside the station is the tram line built in 2003 and worked by 15 Alstom Cityway trams. They are in poor general external condition and also sound in poor condition. We now watch the ferry being loaded. The five carriages from Palermo were combined with the five from Catania and the whole train slowly propelled onto the ferry. Having combined the carriages, the train has to be split again as the ferry only holds five carriages on each of the three tracks. Here the train pulls back after leaving five carriages on the ferry and then moves forward onto the next track. Although the whole loading process is carried out efficiently, it is very time consuming. The whole process of the train arriving in Messina to the ferry departing takes at least one hour. This is a barrier carriage beyond which is a flat wagon and then the class 145 heavy diesel shunter. The D145 class is a Bobo design introduced in 1982 and of 830 horsepower. With all the carriages now loaded, the loading ramp is raised and the ferry ready for departure. In February 2015, plans were announced to remove two train ferries, saving some 46 million euros per annum and shedding 100 jobs in the process. One overnight sleeper would be lost and also some day train services. Currently there are seven train ferry services per day requiring two ferries. The only other EU train ferry is from Puttgarden in Germany to Rodby in Denmark. But this will also close in 2021 when a bridge is opened. An E656 runs past Messina Centrale's classic 1950s design signal box. And an E464 at the head of one of the frequent push-pull services to Catania looks lost in the very long platforms at Messina Centrale. This is Patti on the route back to Palermo. We see a driving cab end of a stopping service push-pull while another E-464 arrives with a train for Messina. Patti is the point where the main trunk route splits between the older coastal route and the faster inland route. The next day we began a circular trip beginning and ending at Palermo and travelling over secondary lines. First we went to Agrigento. The route was electrified and once away from the main line was single track with passing loops. I think it's, um, 
We travelled aboard a three-car ALE 501 EMU, seen here on arrival at Agrigento bus. On the adjacent platform, a restored diesel rail car of class ALN 668 number 1936. We travelled on the rail car through an upland rural landscape on our way down to the port of Impedoc. Here we see one of the reasons for the decline of rail usage in Sicily, the building of new roads funded by EU money. This area, along with almost all other rural areas of Sicily, has suffered massive depopulation ever since 1945. At Tempio di Volcano, it's possible to get off the train and visit the Columbiatra Gardens and Valley of the Temples. The rail car made a run past onto one of the spectacular viaducts on the line. Crossing the viaduct, we see the ancient city of Agrigento on the hilltop. During the 1980s and 90s, the town suffered severe disruption to its fresh water line, allegedly due to the unpaid protection money due to the mafia. Formerly automatic level crossings uh, had all been downgraded to hand operation. The interior of the rail car had been upgraded with new seats and apart from the noise were very comfortable. Porto Empedocco. Traffic over the line had ceased about two years before our visit. The catenary was no longer lined. The station buildings were intact. The town's claim to fame is that it is the hometown of Andrea Camilleria, author of the Inspector Montepolano stories. ALN 668 units were built between 1950 through to the 1980s for use on non-electrified minor routes throughout Italy. The line from Agrigento to Porto Empedocco was now classed as a tourist line. It had no services of any kind apart from a very occasional special trains bringing tourists to the Valley of the Temple. Two weeks before our visit, a short section of new line had been opened down to the port. We began our return journey in the single car unit, from the port and then up through Porto Empedocco. We saw the remains of the old turntable and the small engine shed. This would be an ideal location for a railway preservation. A narrow gauge line also existed here once. Our single car unit reversed at Agrigento Bassa and then ran into the mile or so into Agrigento Central, a large and well provided for station complete with chapel. The next section of our journey would be in this three car diesel ALE 501 Minuetta unit. This train went as far as Caltanissetta Centrale, another large and well appointed station. The booking hall had an elaborately painted ceiling. Caltanissetta Centrale had clearly seen busier times. The overhead wires were not energised. The train we had arrived in departed entry stop to Caltanissetta Zirbi, just 10 minutes away and where we wanted to go, but we had an hour's wait for one of only two trains a day that conveyed passengers. The train we were to catch was, had been enjoying a long siesta. It was another ALN 668 in rather well-worn condition. The short blue line in the centre of the map shows the next leg of the journey. 
Caltanissetta Zerbi had been an important junction with extensive sidings. It was now only used to store track maintenance machines as well as a pair of withdrawn E656s. The station had an example of an old water crane complete with lamp on top and on top of the lamp a pair of telephone cable insulators. Another single rail car appeared from the Catania direction. Whether it was in service or empty stock remained a mystery. 787 of these units were built between 1954 and 83, mainly by Fiat, one batch by Breeder. Note that the unit shown here has two doors on each side, whereas the previous example had one extra wide door per side. An ALE 501 3-car EMU arrives at the Palermo Catania train. And this is followed a short while later by another similar train arriving on another Palermo Catania service. And this was followed by the arrival of our train back to Palermo, thus completing the entire journey.